Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sleepy Fox Yarn Podcast. This is a podcast about uh, knitting, crochet, yarn, um, occasionally some shop updates, and what I've been working on, and whatever I feel like sharing with you guys. Um, sorry, my hair is a frizzy mess right now because, you know, quarantine. No one's going anywhere. Um, we pretty much still stick at home because, well, we're homebodies anyways. Um, <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've been on here. The last podcast was um, 10 months ago, so really long time. And shortly after Christmas, I was just so burnt out from gift knitting that knitting and crocheting just was not a thing. It was not happening. I did not pick up really anything for six months until about June. And, <clears throat> and then it just started slowly with, oh, I'll work. Whew, it's dusty in here. I haven't been up here in a while. Um, and I just turned the fan on. I probably uh, need to clean that. Um, so <laughs> I didn't pick up anything for like six months. And then it slowly started with doing washcloths. I was like, well, it's a washcloth. It's not a super big project. Project. It's something I could pick up, do a couple rows on, put it down, and it's fine. Um, which I did finish about three of them. I honestly have no idea which three they are at this point because, like I said, it's been so long. Um, it's been like three months now. <laughs> so that kind of slowly started me getting back my crafty mojo because like I said it was gone for six months um so yeah slowly but surely I started picking up things and I had a few magic major epic fails um I was doing the ripple bralette which I went according to her sizing and <laughs> it did not not fit me at all um it is really dusty in here, guys. Oh, man, I got to dust. Um, sorry. I... So, I put it on. I was getting to do the strap on one side. My chest area was far too big for it you like you know when you see those girls in those pictures of bikinis that literally just cover the um place where you feed a baby the nip yeah that's pretty much how it was sitting on me and I was like oh <laughs> this is not a good look so I was really upset but I pulled it all out and honestly, at that point, because my craftiness had just not been here, I just, I ripped it out and set it aside and I was done. I'm going to let you guys know it is Sunday when I am filming this. So everybody is home and my kids are wrestling with their dad. And I'm sure you're going to hear screaming because they're being loud. And Emma just can't do anything without screaming at this point. She's seven. And you may hear some crying because Emma doesn't like wrestling when, with her dad. Even though she does it, he starts wrestling with her. And then she's like, ow, that hurt. And, you know. Um, the other thing that I worked on, which I'll get to FOs, but these are ones that I've set aside. They're just like, I was almost too discouraged to go back to them. The other one I was working on, I think it was, it's, um... It's, where's the front page? Maybe? No? Okay, then we're just going to do this page because it doesn't have any real information on it. Okay, so this is called the Dusts of Snow Wrap um, by Helen Stewart. And it's specifically used for your mini skeins that you get during Christmas, which 
if you didn't know, I have a yarn company that is the Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. And last year I did advent calendars. This year it was really hard to get my hands on yarn for advent calendars um, with the place that I go through. That is my supplier. Um, it was really hard to get the yarn and I ended up actually having to cancel my Halloween orders because I couldn't get it in time and in the amount that I needed. So they just, with the pandemic, everything got shut down, even all the processing plants in different countries and it was a big ordeal. So yeah, well, I was doing this slowly but surely, I started realizing that something was not adding up right and I couldn't figure out why. Next thing I know, I and I was, I was getting pretty far that's the wrong side I had gotten fairly I mean I was one two three four of I was getting into my fifth color and um it's supposed to have a hundred stitches and somehow I dropped 12 I have no idea I was down to 88 and I was just like how did this happen how did I lose 12 stitches in here somewhere. I I don't know because nothing was adding up right. So I pretty much put this one aside and, and it was coming out so pretty. I need another light, hold on. Okay, so I'm going to be a little blown out, but in order for you guys to actually see some of these colors. So as you can see, I was, it was turning out so beautiful like the colors were gorgeous and I was loving it and of course I'm gonna be a little biased because it was my colorways you know it was my advent calendar that I was knitting with but I loved it um and it was just it was looking really great so after all of that let's get into it I have quite a few FOs because I basically got to the point where I was like, I'm not going to have a bunch of cast-ons. I still have to go through a lot of my whips and my bags. And let's see if we can just semi-adjust a little. I have a crap ton of paper right here from my kids. Just grabbing a bunch of paper to draw. And they just left it there. Okay. Let's see if we can semi. There we go. That's a little better. You're going to see a little more mess. Um, there we go. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. This podcast is a mess. I haven't done one in, like I said, 10 months. So I'm a little out of practice. I'm a little rusty. Um, so yeah, <laughs> please bear with me. Um, so I, after those two, that one, those two that got messed up that I was getting so, so much good energy from my guess in the beginning that was going really well and I love the way it was turning out it just it didn't and that kind of discouraged me because I had to go back and fix that one and with the ripple bralette I completely ripped it out and I'm just like I have to do a completely different size so it was a little discouraging um to say the least so it took me a little bit longer after that to pick something up again but once I did, sorry, I have makeup on my hand. Um, I started with a sock. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a sock and see how it turns out. So this, this is a pair. Emma can only find one. So a lot of these things have been made for, this was the first thing. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure when I finished it. Um, but this is Knit Picks Felici in the ice cream colorway. Um, and I just did a simple vanilla sock pattern. Um, I use the slip stitch heel, um, which I got from the crazy sock lady, um, in one of her patterns. I really like the way she does the slip stitch heel. So I've been doing that on all my socks, but just doing a vanilla sock, um, which this sock actually is a little big for her. Um, I probably should have done 56 stitches and it's 64 
and um, I do it on a 2.25 millimeter needle. So I think that's a US size zero. Um, so I love the colors. I love the way it came out. Uh, this is actually the one that looks good. The other one, for some reason, nitpicks screwed up their yarn and the toe on the other one literally looks almost exactly like this, but then for some reason it goes, the colors started going backwards. They it, they messed up when, I guess, tying in a new thing because instead of it going like light pink, medium pink, dark pink, dark blue, light blue, white, it then went light blue, dark blue, dark pink. Like it went started going backwards right at the toe and it looks kind of funny, but she likes it, um, and I think they came out really cute. Like I said, they're a little big on her, like around the leg and around her foot. It's a little big, but you know what? I look at it this way. She can grow into it, um, or they're just really comfy boot socks um, or lounging at home socks. So that was my first FO, and all the socks, I only have one because... <laughs> So she can't find her second sock for whatever reason. Mine is in a, somehow they got mixed in the laundry and one went in one load and then one went in another load. And my husband was in the process of getting ready to wash his. So it's kind of all one socks. <laughs> um, so this one was a beanie that I made for myself. This is using the gray, was a red heart, I think. Hold on, let me grab it. I lie, <laughs> I lie. It is um, Loops and Threads Impeccable in the brown tweed brown tweed but it's gray with brown and black and beige tweed in it and then this is the red heart I have it here but I do not have the ball band um I lost it so I am not entirely sure what color this is I may have posted it on Instagram because I have been, sh oh wait, I did not share this one. Oh, crud. I don't remember. Um, but this, and I messed up the um, top. It's really pointy. And I did that with Collins too. Um, so, and this I use, so for all my hats, I use the hats or knits for everybody hats by, um, I think it's Joyce, Joyce Fassbender. That is my go-to hat pattern if it's just a simple beanie that is going to keep you warm through the winter. I would put this on, but then I would look like a weirdo. Like, look at, like, what happened? It's so pointy at the top. I don't know. I was like, you know what? I'll just throw a pom-pom on it, but I still haven't decided which pom-pom I want to put on there, so... But I thought it was super cute the way it came out. It's super simple, just easy knits literally and I haven't done any crocheting because <sighs> before I found out that I was gluten intolerant I was having a lot of wrist and joint pains in my hand and I thought I was getting arthritis um and me being a dummy and continuing to crochet on um even though I was in pain without a wrist brace without anything um, because it was Christmas knits and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going. I'll power through. Well, now anytime I go to crochet, I move my list, wrist a lot. Um, and doing so now, even I can knit for days and it doesn't bother me. Um, because I'm a continental knitter. So it doesn't, the movements are very small where with crocheting there's a lot of this and it really wears on my wrist. So all of these are knitting projects just because the crocheting just 
I tore up my wrist basically. And it just, it hurts to do it, which really sucks because I love crocheting. And I know my kids have been wanting, um, sorry, my nose ring was starting to poke me. Um, my kids have been wanting more stuffies and amigurumis and I'm just like, oh, they hurt and I suck at amigurumis, <laughs> but they really want one. So I'm hoping I can somehow find a way to do it without killing my wrist. Um, so yeah, that is that FO. And then I did that for me and I was like, you know what? Every project that I've tried making for me never works out. Either I haven't finished it, something went wrong. It's been set aside for years at this point on some of them I'm just like I want something for me that's finished I've made so many things for so many people at this point and I'm just like I am gonna be selfish right now <laughs> So my next project is another vanilla sock. Most of the socks that I've been knitting lately have just been plain vanilla, super easy, mindless knitting that I don't have to think about. Um, just because it's, it's getting me back in the groove and keeping my crafty mojo going and I'm really enjoying it, especially doing one project at a time. It is making finishing projects so much easier and so much quicker it's it's been like breezing through I don't feel the stress and anxiety of oh my gosh I have this project into the finish and this project and this project and this project mind you I still have a lot of whips sitting underneath this black table that I need to go through and figure out what I'm keeping what I'm not what I'm going to finish and I know at this point there are a couple things that I started making for people that you know I was making a blanket for Nick's grandmother who is no longer with us. So that's something that, you know, I still have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. I'm not going to rip it out. I think I might send it to his mom, um, but that still isn't finished either. I need to get it finished. Um, but anyways, so this was my sock set that I was making. Now, this is also Knit Picks Felici. I'm trying to get through this Felici right here because I have so much of it and they keep coming out with new colors and I want to get more new colors, but I'm like, I have so many still. I need to just chill out and, you know, knit what I have. And that's what I'm trying really hard to do is knit what I have. So this is the Knit Picks Felici in the Sally colorway. And I felt it so fitting because... The Nightmare Before Christmas is one of our favorite movies in my house, and we watch it all year long. Like, it is not a Halloween movie to us. It is a we watch it all year long movie. Um, even though it has been pretty much on repeat in Emma's room um, since we've started getting cooler weather about last week, which it warmed back up. You know, false fall. We have a false fall, which sucks where we get like a few days of really cool, breezy weather that makes the leaves start to change. And you're like, oh my God, it's here. And then boom, you get a couple more weeks of really warm weather and then it cools down again. So I, and I went pretty long on these socks. Like I normally don't make this long, um, but my foot is very short. Um, and I know I should have blocked it and stretched it. Like, it, as you can see, it's it's got some good stretch there. But I made them too short because I was impatient. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have socks for myself. And once I started getting to the foot, I was like, oh, that's good enough. And then I just did the toe. And I just did the normal standard toe and then Kitchenered it together. Um I used a 2.25 millimeter needle. Sorry, I have like mini hiccups happening right now. So this is a completed pair and I love, I love the way they came out. Um, worst case scenario 
it well these won't fit emma i was gonna say worst case scenario i can give them to emma but like you could see the difference <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think i did mine um i think i did mine with 68 stitches um which is four more than hers but it's enough that it gave my legs room because it does come up so high with my my foot i swear my foot is not that tiny <laughs> i wear an eight and a half or a nine and a half so i don't have small feet by any means but this looks like you know a teeny foot a teeny tiny foot so that was mine and I finished that I would say a few weeks ago it, it hasn't been long because all of the other ones well no I would say it was last month I finished those last month I was like yay I have socks for Halloween I am so excited <laughs> um so next up this is another beanie um, and this one is also kind of pointy. I read the pattern wrong after doing this so many times you would think, how do you read the pattern wrong? Well, I did. I was being dumb and not paying attention. So this is Colin's beanie and it is Red Heart Super Saver Stripes. Um, hold on. These are all tangled together. So whoop, 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 what is happening? Uh oh, okay. I, they're just like together now um let me wrap up this extra one so i use the red heart super saver stripes i'm literally working just from stash right now i have not i have only bought one set of new yarn and that's for an upcoming project and i'll talk to you about that in a minute um but i'm working from stash i have not bought new yarn in Oh God, months and months. Like it's been forever since I've bought new yarn. There was one time I almost did, but I ended up putting it back instead because I wanted a couple movies. I was like, you know what? This yarn's gonna end up costing me 20 bucks and I can get two movies for like 10 bucks out of the, like the $5 movie bin. And I'm like, eh, I'll just get movies instead. So it is Red Heart Super Saver Stripes in the Calm Stripe colorway again using the same pattern it has uh sizes from like i think preemie or newborn up to extra large adult or a large adult hat so it i i literally use it for everybody's hat um this i did take a picture of colin wearing it <laughs> and put it on um instagram and he had like little sunglasses on and he's like standing there all cool and i'm like when did get such a cool kid um so this is um his beanie I don't know so I want to make um mittens for them because both of them have outgrown their mittens I got two years out of one pair surprisingly um so this year they both need new mittens they have grown out of them. Emma's like is sitting here now at her hand and same with Collins. Like he's able to get them on, but you could tell that it's, they need bigger ones. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do a matching pair here like this or do one because they also have like a calm, there's like a fair isle one with the same exact colors and it's called like fair calm fair isle or something um from red heart so i and i have it um i don't know if i'm going to make the matching mittens in the stripes because then it might be really chunky stripes and i might not get every color um or do the fair isle so that way they're somewhat matching but kind of different and i'm not going to get like huge blocks and then they look like mismatch mittens um so I'm thinking I might do the Fair Isle for his um, mittens, which is another project coming up. But I'm, I have a big project that I'm going to do, and then I'm going to have like one small project and kind of work it that way. Um, so next up, I did Nick's socks. 
Um, and I used the Biscotti Yarns, and it says Sock for Him, so I'm assuming that's the colorway name in English because all their colorways are technically in French. Um, so this is the colorway. This is what I have left of it. So I'm thinking Nick and Colin are going to have matching socks because this is plenty to do a little pair of socks for Colin because his feet are still small. You know, he's three. Um, so this is what I used and Nick is a size 13, 12, 13, depending on the shoe. Um, mind you, these are dirty. He has worn them because as soon as I got them done, he came home, changed, and then put on his new socks. <laughs> I was so, I have to say, I was really excited because he's always told me, no, I don't want you to make me anything. I probably won't wear it. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. And I'm like, oh. and then finally, when I had him try on his dad's socks that I was making him for Christmas last year, he was like, oh, these are these are nice. I want, so these are for me, right? I'm like, no, 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 those are your dad's. So <laughs> I finally decided to, sorry, I got distracted. There's someone walking outside. <laughs> I finally decided to get another ball of yarn because what I had was not enough for his socks. And, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Um, so I ended up making him a pair of shorty socks. Now this one is a smidge shorter. I would say like quarter of an inch shorter than his other sock. I made them a little small. Sorry, there's like st hair, dog and cat hair on it. And I'm sorry, they need to be washed. We'll just stick down here. Um, so it's self-striping. Again, same sock pattern, same needle sizes, 2.25 millimeter. Um, it's, I mean, I really don't use a pattern at this point. I just know what I like using together. Um, so that's what I've made for him. He really loves them. He wore them the entire day after he got home from work. Um, so he thoroughly enjoys those and I'm super excited. Um, and then last FO that I had recently finished, uh, few days ago yeah I, I think like th two days ago I think I might have finished it on f Thursday or Friday um I think it might have been Friday Friday morning is when I finished it because we had um, homeschool park day so this is Emma's hat let me see there we go um same same pattern hats for everybody or knits for everybody hats and um, this is the adult size, um, just because I feel like kid sizes at this point is getting a little too snug for her head, um, or it's not quite long enough. So this is an adult size. Um, I could probably put it on, but I won't because, you know, I got my hair up. So this is hers and this is in, um, this yarn right here and it is super saver fair, red heart super saver fair isle in the candy fair isle colorway so it's like super neon bright in your face colors which in a way is a good thing because then it's easier for me to find her on the playgrounds and stuff where I'm like hey where's my kid at oh there she is <laughs> so that is my last fo it is so dusty in here. Oh my goodness. Currently, I only have one whip and it is also something else for Emma. It is the Calazon or Calzon. Cal I think it's Calazon. Calazon. It is a ear warmer, so it's a nice thick head wrap. Um, and it is by the, 
Barocco design team. So it is a free pattern on Ravelry. All the patterns and yarn that I've mentioned, if I remember the name of them, I will link them down below. Um, but yeah. So it is a knitted cable, like a big chunky cable right down the center with, I believe that's seed stitch. I don't know. Um, along the edge. And I love the way this is coming out. So this is my current whip and it needs to get to 19 inches long, which last time I checked, I was like 10 inches here. So I probably put on about a half an inch to an inch. So not quite a foot yet, but I love the way this is looking and I love the look of cables and this is a very simple cable, very simple. And once you get into the rhythm of using the cable needle, it's actually pretty easy, but sometimes it can be a pain. Um, especially remembering which way to pull your cable needle because sometimes you have to pull it to the front, sometimes it's to the back, and you could easily screw up your cables if, you know, you put them in the wrong spot. So I'm literally doing this on DPNs. It says to do it on straight needles or um, circulars, which my circulars I could have done but at first it called for a six millimeter needle and it was just coming out far too big I have learned I am a very loose knitter I I don't I don't pull tension here I use the needle to do the work so I ended up having to go down an entire needle size and go to a five millimeter needle so yeah and the yarn I am using is the Premier Yarns by Deborah Norvell in the Serenity Chunky. And the colorway is Unicorn. So Emma, geez, I got this a long time ago. Um, back when we lived in Virginia. Oh, I didn't even introduce myself. <laughs> I completely, I didn't even introduce myself, guys. Holly. <laughs> I am so out of practice that I forgot to introduce myself and tell you guys where I lived. Oh my goodness. You could tell I am so out of practice. Um, woo. So I bought this when we still lived in Virginia. We live in North Carolina now, which we will be moving in a year, about about a year from now, somewhere else. We don't know where. That's the, the beauty of the military. You never know where you're going until they tell you. Um, <laughs> this has been sitting in my stash because I bought this from Joann's. And this was, this has been sitting in my stash well over two years at this point. Um, yeah, well over two years. Because we've been in this house two years. And I we don't have a Joann's here. Um, the closest Joann's is an hour away, maybe a little more. So I don't go to Joann's anymore because it's too far and I have no other reason to go out that far. So I just don't. Um, so yeah, this is what I am currently making. Um, and eventually this, um, you sew it together and then it's a head wrap. And I wanted to give her something because a lot of the times her whole head will get, she has a lot of hair. Her head will get hot, but her ears are cold. So I was like, well, I'll make you a beanie, but I'll also get you some ear warmers. Um, so she was like, oh, okay, yeah, I want that. And I'm like, all right. Since it's been sitting in my stash forever, I was like, you know what? Like I said, all of this has been from stash. I have not bought any new yarn except for what I'm about to show you because um, we are now moving into future projects of what I'm working on. The kids' mittens are next up and a pair of socks for Colin. So those three we may see soon finished <laughs> because they don't take me very long to do. Um, but this next one, 
I wish I had a picture to show you um, because, yeah, unfortunately I don't because my printer decided um, it was going to run out of ink and not let us know until I tried printing something and it came out blank. Technology is even like I'm over 2020. So I am going to be doing Megan Regan's Astraea sweater, um, which is a beautiful color work sweater with moons and stars all over it. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's to die for. Um, so obviously I don't have sweater quantities worth of yarn for me. Um, I do have a couple for the kids in mind, like bright colors and stuff like that. But for me, I do not. I do not. Um, so these are 50 gram balls of Valley Yarns in their Haydenville DK. So this is going to be my contrast color. This is lavender. Um, and then my main color is going to be black. So it's going to look like this. So it's going to be a black sweater with purple like moons and stars and the, all the detail work. The color work is amazing in this sweater. And I can't wait until she releases her the unicorn one. And then she's doing a dinosaur one. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be knitting all her sweaters because Emma saw the unicorn one. And I'm like, that's perfect because it's literally rainbow and unicorns. Like that is my child. She is a rainbow unicorn. Um, and her next one coming out is dinosaurs. And I'm like, oh my God, that'll be perfect for Colin. So I'm just going to be making all of her sweaters throughout this next, this, this year. Um, hopefully I can get them done before each release. Like, um, the unicorn sweater, I think, comes out October 13th, I think. Um, her Astraeus was just released earlier this month. I had to wait, get the yarn for it, find the right yarn, you know, so it wasn't costing me an arm and a leg. The good thing about, so I wanted wool. I wanted a wool sweater, but I also wanted something that wasn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. And this was the alternative that I found. So the Valley Yarns is 60% superwash merino wool and 40% acrylic microfiber. And it's so, it's nice. It's not scratchy at all. And it's machine washable. So I am super stoked about that. Uh, it says not to dry it which is fine I'll hang it up that's not a problem but I have to be able to throw it in the washer um so I'm so excited about that like I have this big thing full of yarn um I thought it was coming in 100 gram skeins good thing I did the math on it and purchased per by the yardage and not by the grams <laughs> Because I would have screwed up. Um, yeah. So this is what's going to become my sweater. And I know people are looking at that black yarn like, girl, you are crazy knitting with this black yarn. But I mean, I'm wearing black currently. It's really faded. I've had this t-shirt a long time. Um, but majority of the colors that I wear, color that I wear is black. I... Pretty much everything I own is black at this point, except my jeans, which I still even have a pair of like black jeans, black leggings. The only other color that I'll throw in there is like that maroon red, maybe a gray. <laughs> my color palette in my clothing is very limited. I just prefer black. Um, but I tend to bring in the color more so with my accessories, like my beanies, my scarves, my socks, my, you know, stuff like that. But even then, like, I've noticed that when I make my accessories in the really bright colors, I tend not to wear them. So I have to be more realistic. And that's why I did these colors, because they are more muted and more like dark jewel earth tones. 
And I could see myself wearing that more so than super bright, crazy colors. Even though it's pretty as I like them and they're gorgeous, I don't wear it. So I have to be more realistic when purchasing yarn and what I'm going to use it with. Um, and if I'm actually going to wear it, because most of the time I don't. So that is pretty much it. Um, I won't go into a life update because it has been, it's 2020. Everyone's life has been insane and nuts and crazy. And we've all been locked in the house, um, <laughs> washing our hands, staying away from people, wearing masks, you know, as much as you probably, I hate it. I hate the way we're living right now. It, I can understand why, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. <laughs> Like, I don't like it at all, um, but I try and do my part, and it's, it's just been a crazy year, and so much has happened. Oh my goodness, so much has happened, um, but major events, you know, um, recently, both my kids had gotten sick, not covid plain old fashioned cold, had them tested and everything because they ended up getting really sick, you know, not to the point where it was unmanageable, but the reason why they ended up getting tested is they both ended up getting ear infections after. Colin ended up getting swimmer's ear from, um, we went to a little party and they had like a water slide with a pool at the end. And of course all the neighborhood kids came and when that happened he started complaining the next night that his ear hurt we took him in you know we told him that he was sick he was running a fever he was sick at this point he had gotten better you know the fever was super low nothing that was concerning that he needed to be like in the hospital or even given Tylenol um it was fine and it lasted less than 12 hours so I was like okay we're good like it's it's just a cold and that's exactly what they said it was but his swimmer's ear got really bad we had to take him in a second time and all that fun jazz and get him on oral antibiotics ear drops you know he was on because his fever with the ear infection was like it went from going to like 99.3 to 100.4 to 101.6 and i'm like what is happening? And then it was 102.2. And I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm taking him in. <laughs> like it keeps climbing and climbing. And I tried everything I could to break that fever and nothing worked. Um, turned out his ear infection had gotten worse because the drops they gave him weren't helping at all. They were basically like, yeah, this was doing absolutely nothing for the last three days. And I'm like, awesome. So they put him on an oral antibiotic and a different eardrop that didn't have steroids in it and better. Emma's ear infection was, I want to say inner ear infection, but they said a middle ear infection. Um, hers was due to a buildup of fluid behind her eardrums, and that's why her ears were hurting. And mind you, both of them were bilateral, so they had it in both ears. It was not just one. Um, and she was put on antibiotics and boom, done. So there was that. And I did mention we're moving. We found that out earlier this year that we will be moving sometimes next year. And I have a feeling it's going to be right around, um, I have a feeling it's going to be in November when we're moving. So Hopefully not before Holland's birthday. We can still have his birthday either here or at the new place. So either like, but if we do it before, then that means we're moving right around Halloween. So we have how, oh, sorry. I was like shaking my leg. Um, Halloween, then Colin's birthday, then Thanksgiving. So I have a feeling we're going to be moving between his birthday and Thanksgiving is going to be my guess um, because Nick got recruiting duty. Yay! So we're going to be moving again next year. Um, like I said, to where? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, yeah, 
and that's, you know, a lot of stuff has happened, you know, but it is what it is. Everyone's having a tough year this year. I feel like there hasn't been one person that hasn't had a rough year this year. <laughs> like if you haven't, congratulations. You're among the few that have not. And I'm jealous <laughs> because it's it's been crazy. It has been so crazy. Um, insane, intense, the fear mongering, the politics that's going on, the everything. It's been a lot. It has been a lot. Um, so yeah, other than that, not much else is going on at my house except, you know, being homebodies and really getting back into the flow of knitting and hopefully crocheting again soon because I have so many projects in mind that I want to get done, but I don't want to cast everything on and then become crazy overwhelmed at not doing as much as I would like to on a certain project. So I'm just going to take it one or two at a time. So like once I start the Estrella sweater, I'm not going to work exclusively on that because I'll burn myself out because it is a sweater. It's huge. Um, so I'll probably work on that and a pair of socks, work on that and a pair of mittens. So smaller projects with a big sweater project is how I'm kind of working it. So like one sweater or like one big project and then a small project. Lately, all of them have been small. As you could see, they were all pretty small projects, you know, socks, beanies. That's actually all I did, <laughs> socks and beanies. <laughs> But it's getting me back into the flow and it's making me want to create more. And yeah, the shop has not had an update in forever. I think the last thing I did was put in a few bags um, a couple months ago. I started, I got a new sewing machine. My mother-in-law and father-in-law bought for me for Christmas and I love it. It is amazing because my last one decided to take a on me. Um, so I'm finally getting into using it. I've made, oh, I've made a, a ton of masks as well. Um, but yeah, I did put in some bags. They're pretty, they're, they're sock size bags. Um, I don't know where they're at. I have them. They're in a container down there with all my extra, like, pieces that I have to sew together still. Um. I need to put up more bags. I've been slacking. Um, like I said, my craftiness is coming and going. Like all of a sudden I got real crafty with sewing and I was making bags and masks and I was just going to town and I loved it. And then all of a sudden it was just like <clears throat> gone. Just my luck. So <laughs> I'm taking it slow, trying not to burn myself out because knitting and crocheting and crafting and sewing is just my stress and anxiety reliever that I completely forgot about for a while and it's nice to have it back. Something to keep my hands busy so my mind isn't going crazy. <laughs> so, alrighty guys, it has been almost 50 minutes at this point recording, which might not be because I have some stuff to, you know, edit out because of me, you know, choking on my own spit and stuff. <laughs> so I will see you guys. Um, I'm not sure. I want to become regular podcasting again. I don't know if it'll be weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly. Um, We'll kind of just go with the flow and see where it takes us. So I uh, will see you guys next time. Bye. Do you guys want to say hi? Hi. Hi. Here. Say hi to everybody. Hi, buddy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you guys are getting so big. I actually like your makeup, Mama. Yeah? I like your makeup. Did you bite your lip? Yeah. All right. Oh, I thought that was Sierra.
No. Yeah. All right. All right. Can we say bye? Bye.